Okay, so let me be real. Grocery shopping was never, ever really my favorite thing to do, but add food inflation on top of it? Like, really? The USDA reported that in 2022, food prices were expected to increase between 9.5 and 10.5%. Y'all, 10%. That's insane. So I say, let's finesse inflation together. Shop smarter, not harder, with these whole foods I love. Hey y'all, I'm Angel White. I make music and I share creative wellness content and I'm really, really grateful that you clicked on this video. Thank you, thank you for tuning in. Listen, I was like a lot of you all curious or just maybe just feeling like overwhelmed with trying to become a plant-based lifestylist. Is that a word? Is that what we're going with? I was super unsure and unprepared and oftentimes I would get plant-based food options that were just overpriced and underwhelming. So today, if you're a beginner, you're transitioning, or you are a lifelong plant eater and you want to begin to cook and eat cleaner in the kitchen without breaking the budget, just keep watching. So here we go. I am ranking my top five plant-based food options and we are starting in the bean and lentil family. I'm going with chickpeas. Yes, I love, love, love chickpeas. Let me go in and check on these goddamn garbanzo beans. Versatile, nutty flavor, creamy texture, and coming in at a whopping 85 cents a can and can get them cheaper if you get them dry. They're high in dietary fiber, calcium, and magnesium, and I cook them like two or three. No, let me stop lying. I cook chickpeas so much. I, I literally could pop and become a chickpea at any moment. I cook them so much, they're that good. You can saute them, air fry or regular fry, bake them, smash. Opportunities are endless. So what I cook, I do like chickpea curry with them, um, chickpea salads, I do like a vegan tuna fish salad. I put them as like a crispy salad topper, put them in my bowls, my Buddha bowls, rice bowls. I make them into hummus, so many things. So speaking of salads, for leafy greens, it's a tie for me. I couldn't choose, so I'm going with romaine and spinach. These are my girls, they're complete. Let's start with romaine. For one, I love, love bowls. I love, 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 love bowls. Listen, I sound like that boy, I love corn. I love corn. If, if you watched any of my videos prior to this one, you know I'm gonna have a bowl in it. That's just what we do. Bowls, they're easy, they're fresh, they're light. They just get the job done and I, I, I can't go without them. I'm addicted. I am addicted to you. I'm addicted. Yeah, they're good for bowls, but honestly, romaine could be used for so much more. Salads, of course, taco toppers. You can stuff them um, in potatoes. They can be juiced, and they can be a base for a variety of different Buddha and rice bowls. It's packed with vitamin C, vitamin K, and folate, and where I am, it's about $2.99 for an organic bunch. Then there is spinach. So spinach can give main character energy. I mean, it can be on its own, served as a side dish, but it also can play a supporting role in so many recipes. I'm talking smoothies, omelets, bowls, juices. Organic spinach bunches are about $2.89, I believe, at the farmer's market I saw last time I went there, and contain high amounts of vitamin A, calcium, and iron. And as a black woman, honestly, iron is so important. A lot of us are deficient in it, so listen, if you need a really, really good boost of iron, try some spinach. So my only caveat to this is it's very, very important that you steam your spinach before you consume it. If possible, if possible. That is because spinach, along with the along with other dark leafy greens like kale, contain a very high amount of oxalic acid. High amounts of oxalic acid um, actually inhibit the body from absorbing nutrients. So if you can, even if for a few minutes, just steam your spinach before you eat it, before you throw it in a smoothie. What I've done, it, with smoothies in particular, I've steamed it for a little bit and then I just put it in the freezer. And so you put it in the freezer and you can have these little cups and you'll just put in your smoothie and you won't even taste the difference, honestly. And this doesn't apply to everyone, but in my experience, I've learned the importance of steaming spinach. All right, for my grains, I'm going with the underdog. I'm going with quinoa. And honestly, I've seen over the internet, y'all have dragged quinoa from here to there, and she doesn't deserve that. I'm really thinking that most people just do not know how to prepare quinoa correctly. And that's why, I don't even need to do a video. I'm just gonna drop right here how I do quinoa. Quinoa, I boil it in broth, not water, broth. I'll put a little sea salt in there, butter. If you're vegan, opt out or do vegan butter, or you can do oil. Do that. And also you have to make sure that with the broth you're doing, if I do a cup of quinoa, then I'm doing a cup and a half or a cup and a third of broth, not two cups because that'll make it too mushy. And I like a little bit of crunch in my quinoa, not too much, but a little bit. I like quinoa over other grains because when I eat it, I get little to no bloating compared to if I eat like a white rice or a brown rice. 
in my experience, washing the quinoa does wonders, letting it soak a little bit before I cook it has really, really allowed me to avoid gas and bloating and all the other things that come with eating grain. I use quinoa in cold salads, warm salads, soups, bowls, stuffed veggies and roots like potatoes or peppers, or as a side dish on its own. One pound of quinoa ranges about $4.99, so we're right under that budget, but we are under it. It's a great source of folate, magnesium, and zinc. From the root community, root, 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 root. Not sure what that was, but from the root community, and I'm talking like they're a civilization, but to me, they're that important. We're going with sweet potatoes. I'm choosing sweet potatoes over white potatoes, even though they both hold a very, very special place in my heart. I love potatoes. I love them baked, sauteed, put them in the air fryer. I like them um, smashed, fried, dyed, laid to the side. I love, I love potatoes. I do, I do. I'm a carb girl. I is who, who doesn't? I don't know one person that doesn't like carbs, so there's really no reason for me to distinguish that. I love bread. But yes, they're great in bowls, they're great stuff, they're great mashed, they're great in pies. Come on, y'all, sweet potatoes really are that girl. I even like them pureed for oats, muffins, pancakes, desserts. They really do it all. So their nutrient profile contains a high amount of vitamin A, vitamin C, manganese, and they're only 99 cents a pound, so go crazy. Get, get you about five pounds of sweet potatoes and try something new. Last, certainly not least, I'm throwing y'all a curveball. Yes, it's the good old oyster mushroom. Now listen, I know a lot of people don't like how mushrooms taste. They don't like how they look. They don't like how they smell. They don't like how they, I mean, come on. We really are low key disrespectful to mushrooms. I am here to stand up for the mushroom. The mushroom really does not deserve the slander that y'all are giving it. And whoever put me on to oyster mushrooms, I thank you. I appreciate you. I love oyster mushrooms for the ability to really hold flavor and retain a texture once cooked. They have like a velvety, dense texture that's similar to seafood. And so it, it really is great for recipes that require a meat substitute. High in niacin and vitamin D. I found that, so the, the price of oyster mushroom ranges from five to like $15 plus. But I have, when they're in season, found at my farmer's market that you can get them for about $5 a pound. I've cooked oyster mushrooms in my omelet, vegan ground beef for tacos. I've sauteed them with other veggies and I'm looking forward to starting to batter and fry them. I've seen that all over IG and TikTok and I'm like, I'm ready. I think I'm ready to get some fried oyster mushrooms. So I'll probably put that up on my channel. Just stay tuned and we'll, we'll get something out for y'all. So that's it. That's my top five plant options for anybody that wants to cook cleaner eat cleaner and not break that bank. I hope you all got some value out of this. If you liked the video, thumbs up for me, please. And if you enjoyed this type of content, please feel free to subscribe. If that's what your heart is telling you to do, I would encourage you to. I mean, at this point, I feel like it's obligatory. I don't know if that's the word, but we gonna go with it. Obligatory that you subscribe, but that's just me, okay? So now I wanna put it on y'all. In the comments, let me know what food you're gonna include in your next recipe or if there's a plant-based food that I didn't include that you feel like should have been in the top five, let me know because I'm always trying to expand my palate and the things I cook in the kitchen. So again, thank you for viewing. And as always, stay grounded, stay growing. I love you all. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye.